Greetings! I am Herbert Erpaderp, and today I'm going to finally finish the Flames of War Grimble's Beast box. A link to a playlist with the three previous videos will be in the description. Today I will complete the Armoured Rifle Platoon with the addition of their half tracks. There are two sprues for these, both of which are fairly neat looking and relatively free of mould lines, though there are a couple of round sinkholes, some of which are in areas that will be visible on the finished model, notably on the winches and rollers. Despite that flaw, the parts look nice and crisp. In addition to the sprues, there is a baggie full of hulls. They do look good for the most part, though some of them look to have been clipped from the sprue quite roughly, resulting in some imperfections. I know at least one other person has had this issue. It could be passed off as battle damage, but it is a bit annoying. There is also a sprue of crew figures for each of the half tracks. These are quite nice looking, particularly for 15mm scale figures. There are decals included which are to be shared with the Pershings and Shermans. If you've seen the previous videos in this series, you will know that the instructions are not included. They are the same instructions as the infantry and are available on flamesofwar.com, also linked in the description below. I began assembly by gluing the interior into the hull, of course after test fitting and cleaning off any visible mould lines. Next, the tracks are attached. These are conveniently keyed to ensure correct positioning and they fit quite well. They didn't need much clean up at all before being glued on. The front wheels can then be glued into place. These aren't keyed and have just enough movement on the axle to allow them to be positioned as though they are steering. Be sure to get the wheels lined up with each other to avoid having derpy looking wheels. Next I added the rear of the half track. This is where the two versions of this vehicle differ. I've chosen to build mine as M5s. To build the M3, you would use the appropriate rear and front fenders. The parts for the M5 version are conveniently labelled on the sprue. There isn't really much of a difference between them. They're so similar that they could be used interchangeably and almost nobody would notice the difference. Next, I glued in the support pole for the machine gun ring. This part must be placed the same way as I've placed it, with the opening of the U-shape facing the right side of the vehicle. I then attached the front windshield part. After that, I added the machine gun ring itself. This is a kind of lip along the outer edge to make positioning the part easy. If the ring part and the support pole aren't aligned, just use something convenient to nudge them together, like a knife. I then turned my attention to the front of the half track. For my HQ vehicle, I've decided to add the winch. This will allow it to be easily recognised on the table. The rest of the half tracks receive rollers. These parts went on rather easily, though do pay attention to be sure that they are on straight. The instructions state that, as I have done, only the HQ vehicle should have the winch. But I think if you want winches on all of your half tracks, then you should give them all winches. They are your models after all. The instructions also lay out different configurations for each vehicle according to infantry units that they will carry. Instead, I just gave them all 50 caliber machine guns on the gun rings and left it at that. There are options for 30 cal machine guns and additional machine guns on the sides. When gluing on the machine gun, I use the crew figure that will be firing it to determine how it should be positioned. This should allow the crew figure to be easily glued into his position after painting, as I will be painting them separately. There are some seated infantry figures that can be placed in the passenger compartment, though I don't think I will be adding them. Only the driver and machine gunner, or a guy with binoculars on some vehicles. The crew figures are pretty neat and were easy enough to clean up. I only scraped the mould lines from the parts that will be visible. For the driver, this is only really the helmet, which makes things a lot easier. I quite like these half tracks. They were really quick and easy to build and they look fantastic. There are a reasonable amount of options you can give them if you want. The only faults I really had with them were a couple of sink marks, particularly on the winch and roller parts, and the roughly clipped out hull parts. I think these are pretty minor complaints and they don't detract too much from the models. I do say this about most vehicle models, but it would be nice if they came with some stowage. I would imagine that a half track would be covered in a lot of bags and boxes and supplies. More passengers would be nice too, though I am very satisfied with these without such. Something I like about these is that I should be able to also use them for my British forces and maybe even Soviet forces, though I think I will have to paint them to match the rest of the Grimble's Beast box set. Unfortunately, I don't have any other M3 or M5 half tracks to compare these with, but I have been considering obtaining a box of the Plastic Soldier Company version for my Brits, so when I eventually do that I will compare them, so stick around for that if you're interested. That's the last part of the Grimble's Beast box set completed. Something I quite like about this is just how many extra pieces there are for my bits box. Glorious. So here's the entire Grimble's Beast Force assembled. I think this is a really nice little army. Despite the lack of things like a rule book, I think this is a great start for somebody wanting to get into Flames of War. Or for somebody just wanting to begin a new force like me. I now have four Flames of War armies. This box set is reasonable value, but obviously would be even better value if you managed to buy it on sale. Unfortunately, by the time this video is out, Flames of War's 33% off sale will be over, but definitely keep an eye out for that kind of thing. 
I took advantage of the sale to get some new Soviet plastic, so keep an eye out for videos about that. I hope this video and indeed the entire Grimble's Beast box series has been helpful and interesting for you. I will begin painting these models pretty soon, so eventually there will be another series of videos for that. Don't forget to subscribe to be notified when that comes out or if you would like to see more. And of course leave any comments you might have in the comment section below on Facebook or Twitter, both of which are linked in the description. Thanks for watching. Farewell.